folks. So today I thought we'd take a look at measuring devices. Uh, so what we have here are a series of uh, metal key gauges and then up here we have two different types of micrometers. So uh, to start with, got a pile of keys off to the side here and we're gonna see how each of these different uh, micrometers or key gauges will work. Uh, let's see. First, somewhere in here I have, there we go, some master lock keys. And we have a couple of different uh, gauges that are supposed to measure those. Uh, now the thing is, each of these gauges generally only works for uh, one particular set of keys. So we have a master lock key gauge here. Nice lock right there, and you can see they have two different groups. Uh, keys number 1, 3, 5, 15, 17, 27, uh, 6,000, and 7,000, and then down here, uh, 81 and 600A. Uh, so these are keys for a master lock number 5, so we'll use the top. Uh, slot and basically all you do is you slide the key in there so that the metal plate lines up with one of the cuts and you just slide that down until it stops and then you read the number uh, that it's closest to. So in this case uh, this would be a three because it's not uh, down in the cut for a four. If we go to the next cut Keep sliding down until it stops. That would be a six. And now four. And another four. That's only a four pin key. So that's how pretty much all of these gauges work. They're just going to work uh, for slightly different types of keys. So here's a, a quick set style key. And gauge right here, or this gauge, will work for quick set. So there's the bit that says quick set, if the camera will focus for me. There we go, quick set. And you can see 1 through 6. Uh, technically, quick set does have 7 depths, but uh, the 7th depth is really only used for older quick set systems. Once they introduced Smart Key, uh, they dropped the extra depth because uh, they couldn't use it for Smart Key. So three, five, two, three, and one. That's all there is to it. And the same exact uh, process goes for all of these keys, even uh, the slightly more complicated ones like Yale. Yale has two depth systems. They use the exact same key blanks for each. But uh, So you have to guess whether it's going to be uh, 19 thousandths or 25 thousandths step. So here we have a very old uh, Yale key. And let's start by trying it with the 25,000 steps. Now for this, uh, the way it works, since there aren't those obvious, uh, there isn't that sort of staircase designed to it, it's just a slope. If the key doesn't stop cleanly or very, very close to uh, one of the numbers, it's probably either very worn or for the other system. So. This is like a four and a third on the 25,000th step. So let's try it on the 19,000th step. And that stops pretty cleanly on the number six. So that's probably a six cut in the 19,000th step. And you would just do the same to confirm as long as you go down and cuts are coming out fairly close to the number on the gauge. 
uh, you've got a pretty good idea that you've got the right scale. Uh, one important thing is that when you're doing that, the T should always be perpendicular to the uh, gauge and should be held very carefully vertical. If you slant it a little bit, it will not give you accurate readings. And so you can get these uh, from lots of places, generally $30, $35 or less, depending. Uh, you can get the, like the lab 5-in-1 or the lab 2-in-1 gauges quite cheaply. Uh, the others may be more expensive depending on what system they're for, uh, how rare they are, like this is a, a gauge specifically for Corbin Russwin's Pyramid High Security System. Pretty hard to find uh, and not particularly cheap. Whereas Prolock, uh, also not very cheap, but that's because it does four different systems in one and it's, you know, pretty big compared to even Labs 5 in one. But these are a little bit limited. They will only work uh, with the specific blanks and uh, depth systems that they're designed to deal with. If you get uh, a key that isn't one of those systems, or you get a key that you suspect was not cut correctly, well then you're going to need to use one of these. Uh, these are two different examples of calipers. This one uh, is made by uh, Foley Bellsaw, who are largely out of business at this point. Um, but this one is specifically designed for measuring keys. So it has uh, this uh, sort of pointed tip on it. And the idea is that you unscrew this to open it up. And then let's find something weird that we don't have a gauge for. Okay, here's an old seagull key. And the idea is that you seat that point in the depth, in the uh, center of your cut. And then you just slowly close this up. It has this little uh, grip area that once you tighten it down, it won't allow you to over tighten it and then it will give you a reading in thousandths of an inch in this little window here or you can read it off the scale so in this case uh, 0.226 and you would then have to uh, check that against a depth and space table uh, don't believe i have one on hand for seagull but as an example, here is one for Best A2 uh, that is available from LockReference.com, who I, uh, I very much recommend for uh, reference tables like this. And so if we have 0.226, we can look on their table and try to find uh, a depth, a root depth, uh, similar to so in this case, uh, it looks like we're halfway between a 7 and an 8. Uh, so this is probably a very worn key, and that was originally a 7 cut. And then when you're done, you just tighten it back up until that meter reads 0, and you can put it back in its case. Uh, this one also comes with this little wrench, which is used for changing the zero on the micrometer. Just hook the little tip into this hole and give it a slight turn, and it will uh, adjust the zero point. So if you have it closed all the way up, and it's not showing all zeros, then you know that it's uh, out of adjustment and you need to fix that. The newer and usually cheaper version is the 
electronic caliper uh, like this. You can get them generally for $20 or less. You can get them from Harbor Freight, Rokaj, or uh, any number of places. Or you can get really nice ones, but those cost like a couple hundred dollars. Um, so let's find another oddball key that we're not quite sure about, or that we don't have a gauge for. Here's a uh, arrow. I don't have an arrow gauge, so we would need a uh, depth chart for arrow. So turn this on, you see that it's reading uh, all zeros, which is good. If it was, say, reading like that, when we have it fully closed, we know that we need to reset it, and this one has a very simple way of doing that. You just close it to uh, whatever the index point is going to be, and press the button marked zero, and it automatically recalibrates. So let's take a look at this. We're going to seat this narrow part of the jaw in the cut and close it down. This little screw here helps lock it in place. And so that is reading as uh, point two one zero. So uh, we would then take a look at the arrow uh, depth table and see if there is something uh, either exact or very close to that within a couple thousandths. Uh, if we don't find a cut that is remotely close to it, then we know that uh, that key has been miscut and we have to either disassemble the lock, measure out the pins, or uh, we have to assume that they are using a different depth system than the uh, blank and keyway would indicate. Uh, the other nice thing about these types of micrometers, in addition to them being very cheap, is that you can make attachments for them that allow you to do things like measure dimple keys or measure uh, the depth of a missing uh, pin. So here we have an empty American lock core, and there we go, we've got some American lock keys, so we're going to put that in there, and we're going to attach our little depth probe. So you open it up, Slide the attachment on and tighten the screw so that it holds in place. And what we're going to do now is we're going to line this up so that that bit of metal between the chambers is under the pin. And we are going to zero the caliper. And then we just go to the chamber that we want to measure and slide that in until it stops. And so what we need here is a pin that is roughly uh, 0.140 inches long. And so we would make a note of that and go along to any other questionable cuts. And then when we're done, we can use those numbers to select pins out of the pin kit. And when we're done, just remove the attachment, put it back in the box, close the caliper up, and re-zero it. So very handy uh, and versatile. You can use that same uh, technique to measure uh, the cut depths on uh, uh, dimple keys and the like, where you wouldn't normally be able to uh, fit a clamp style caliper. So, uh, depending on what type of work you do, what you need to measure, if you only need to measure a handful of designs, it may be cheaper and easier to get these metal plates. These are also much easier to work with in the field. Uh, if you deal with a huge variety, uh, getting some reference tables and uh, one of these types of micrometers uh, may be a bit more useful. One last tool 
uh, that a lot of people don't see because it is very expensive is the HPC pocket decoder system. It comes in this nice little pouch and so the heart of the system is this device. Put that there for now. So the way it works is you have a slot up here that you put one of these sets of cards in and then you have a slot down here for the key and this is going to be the gauge and you can see there's a needle that travels there. Uh, so let's say because I have that American lock key still sitting here, this is the reference card for the American lock. So we're going to slide it in until it stops. Now we have a gauge right there. And let's get that key in. So we just hold that open. And we're going to slide that key in until the first cut lines up with the metal probe. And let it sit. And so according to this, this is uh, a number two cut. And we can just repeat the process. That looks like a number one. Uh, there's a third cut here, which is also a number two. And then we've got a number six, a number three, and a number seven. Now, the one problem that I have with this, and it may just be uh, my particular uh, copy, is that I find that this tends to be fairly inaccurate. On a lot of uh, types of keys, it will uh, read either completely off the scale or it will read as half cuts everywhere. Um, if you get lucky and you do have one where uh, the needle is uh, accurate, then good for you. This is a very handy tool. It even has uh, a way here to read the angles on Medico style uh, keys with the uh, angled cuts. So you can see printed on there LCR for left, center, and right. And what will happen is when you put one of those keys in, uh, the arm on the probe will angle itself between those three positions, depending on the angle of the cut. So uh, at $300 and with kind of iffy accuracy uh, and quality control. Um, personally, I wouldn't recommend it unless uh, it's something that you are really sure you need. And, uh, you know, if, if you get a bad one, you may be able to get it fixed by HPC under their uh, service program, but it's kind of hard to say sometimes. Uh, especially if you are not uh, a registered or a licensed locksmith. So, until next time, have fun and happy picking.